My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional biking kit tester for tw over 25 years. And this is my tech talk around on the brand new specialized Turbo Levo S SL S-Works. And when I say new, I mean totally new. New frame, new geometry, new motor, and a new level of kit on it as well. So straight in to the most obvious change, no more sidearm, that distinctive kind of reach around on the frame that Specialized added as a stiffening member is gone, which gives them a lot more flexibility in what shocks this bike can use. And all the specs actually come with a piggyback shock. Travel is up as well to 150 mil. This S-Works gets this natty carbon fiber wishbone on the back of the shock. Most bikes will get a uh, standard alloy one. You also get this nice polished rocker linkage completing that FSR 4 bar. But the other big change is the fact they've actually changed the kinematic, which is relatively rare for Specialized. They've kind of kept a very similar ride feel for a long old time, but according to Buck, the product manager who I was talking to on Zoom last night, this heralds a new era for Specialized suspension. I mean, the layout's the same, but you're getting more anti-squat, you're getting a more rearward axle path for the rear wheel, and you're getting a more linear shock response as well. So big changes to the way that back end behaves, even though it looks very similar. And those are pretty obvious on the trail as well. I mean, it still feels like a four bar, but it's definitely more positive and it's got more kick on the power. Plus it takes big slap hits a little bit better than it did before. They've also done a full custom tune as they normally do on that Float X shock. So it's a very light compression and rebound to give the bike some pop, but it's also got a much sort of more support off the top and then better ramp up at the end. So it's quite keen to use the mid stroke, but not as keen as the normal Float X. And there's just a nice little bit of ramp up at the end that stops it blowing off the uh, travel ring too easily. Does run quite a lot of pressure though. That's uh, so maybe if you're a super heavy rider, then this bike might be out of your range, but to be fair, if you're a super heavy rider, you're probably going to want the full fat turbo Levo. Travel goes up to 150 mil at the rear end, and then that's complemented by 160 mil Fox 36 up front. All bikes now get the 36, so proper hard hitting fork up front and a much more capable bike overall, especially when you factor in that uh, new rearward axle path. And that's saying something because the original. Turbo Levo SL was, you know, it was quite, you know, it's pretty handy on the descents already, but this noticeably better from the riding I've been doing today, noticeably better on big clattery stuff and faster stuff as well. Part of that is also due down to the new geometry. So you've got a 470 mil reach on this new large, and you've got the same adjustable headset system as you'll find on the stump jumper. So default setting, well, depending where you have the chip at the rear, is 64.5 but it will go as slack as 63 or up to 66 and then you've got a flip chip on the shock as well and another flip chip down on the rear chain state but that one is purely to allow you to switch between 27.5 which is the standard wheel size for this levo sl again quite a controversial move uh putting a mullet back wheel uh on a bike that's previously been all about kind of speed and efficiency uh, but now it's more sort of about agility and playfulness. And that gives you, but that, and, but you can put a 29er wheel in the back of that without disturbing the geometry at all. And to make the most of that new, more aggressive geometry, you get a Butcher Grid Trail T9 up front and then an Eliminator Grid Trail T7 at the back. So reasonably fast rolling at the back. And then one of my favorite sticky, grippy tires up front. And that's been an absolute godsend on the Welsh off piece we've been riding today. Moving up to the rest of the spec, Fox factory suspension for sh fork, shock, and then you've got a reverb axis dropper post, and you've got the latest Eagle transmission kit on here as well, including their new carbon fiber e-bike cranks and that awesome looking T-Type XX cassette rear mech on there and for those who are worrying I properly twatted that hard today and it didn't care a damn. Direct mounting onto the frame with that new Eagle cassette on there as well. So 
And I have to say, you know, they said it would work really, really well on an e-bike and getting the first chance to try it with that extra wattage load, the shifting is still absolutely on point. Hello? Sheep next door are getting uh, shouty about it. There's a bit of uh, Welsh stereotypical soundtracking in the background. And then coming up front, you've also got the new Code Stealth Brakes. You can see whole new lever architecture on there with this, again, slightly controversial routing of the cable coming around in front of the bars there now rather than angling out of the brake. And that should make it easier to fit into internally routed headsets. Although, to be honest, I'm pleased to say all the control cables go into the inside of the frame now. Go into the side of the frame on the Specialized. It's not an internal routed headset because obviously that would foul up the fact that it's actually really, really easy to change that headset angle. And then other little neat features on the bike. You've got Deity Stem. You've got Carbon Bar on there. You've got the little neat... I can never get these open. But you've got your SWAT tool popping out there with your little mini tool inside. You've got a bottle cage on there and that works with the range extender which is a 160 watt hour uh, auxiliary battery you can plug in if you need it to. And you've got a little gusset on the back of the frame there, a little rubber flap to stop stones going in between the lower linkage and the main frame. You've got a really nice acoustic uh, chain guide on there and that's top and bottom on the chain stay as well. And this, this kind of matte finish, it's a really thin lacquer over uh, the Naked Carbon, and that saves you about 150 grams over the standard painted finish. And that's, again, like the, like the uh, Carbon Link, that's an exclusive to the S-Works model. And then flipping it round, you can see big code caliper there. The caliper hasn't actually changed. It's the same as it was previously. It's just the levers that have changed. But you've got 200 mil HS2 rotors on there for more stopping power. They're the thicker, stiffer, more powerful rotor. You've got that little flip chip down there for the 29 or 27.5 rear wheel. And then moving up here again, that's that rubber flange I was talking about. And there's the little recharge port on the side there. And uh, that's where you plug in your charger or you plug in your auxiliary battery. And then down here, you have this SL 1.2 motor. Now, the big change of this is it's got more power. Uh, that's what you'll notice when you're riding. So still three modes, but also fully customizable through the Specialized Mission Control app. And you can also micro tune it on the trail. Uh, through the little display on top, which we'll look at in a second. But not only has it, it so it goes up from 35 newton meters to 50 newton meters, so that's a 43% increase in power. But it also, maximum power now goes up to 320 watts. And the battery inside the frame is 320 watt hours as well now. So you're getting more power and you're getting a bigger battery to let you use that increased power, more, increase that to let you use that. So you're getting more power down there and more battery capacity to help you make the most of it in the mainframe. But the really clever thing is that despite a much chunkier build, despite more travel, despite piggyback shocks, despite bigger forks, despite you know a more powerful motor, overall frame weight is pretty much exactly the same as it was. This S-Works in an S4 size weighs in at 17.6 kilos without pedals on. So pretty light, I mean, not as light as the uh, Scott or the Rockwell, uh, which in the top models goes down to about 15.5, but still a very handy and agile e-bike on the trail. One thing I should also add is that not only is the motor more powerful, it's also a lot quieter. They've moved to a two-piece uh, motor casing on it, and it's actually got a honeycomb structure internally to uh, help deaden the sound. And they've even done things like reshape the gears in the gearbox inside there just to introduce just to reduce the motor noise and speaking to the engineers that was kind of the hardest part of the whole project so not quite as quiet as the tq which is kind of its obvious competition but definitely quieter than the previous levo sl a hell of a lot quieter than most full fat motors and pretty damn unobtrusive on the trail when you're riding certainly most of the time today running an eco and trail uh tire noise wind noise you know clothing noise is far outweighed any uh, kind of acoustic signature from that motor, even when it's working pretty hard. And then moving up to the top tube, you've got this TCU2, 
setup here. It gives you your various information. This is all fully customizable, but that's the ride we did today. So 2.45 riding time, 37.1 kilometers, 11.45 meters altitude gain. Some pretty spicy trails going up and down. Uh, I will admit that I used a fair amount of uh, uh, actually, I don't know why it's dropped down to 40. It was at 50 when I finished the ride, so we're not quite sure what's happened there. I did pedal uh, a fair amount of the climbs off just to see how the bike behaved, just to get the most of that, out of that new suspension system. But, you know, even with 37k, uh, most of the people I was riding with still had some battery life left, although they were, you know, down to 10% 10, 10 or lower. So, again, you know decent range from what has been a testing big old day out on the bike today and then moving up here that's your you know, really neat control unit on the bars you've got plus and minus obviously for the different modes and then that's your button for controlling the TCU and you've got eco you've got trail and you've got turbo as well and again you can change all the different motor presets and the display presets in the mission control app and final thing, nearly forgot to say, on this top model, you also get the Roval Traverse SL carbon wheel set to keep the weight down and they're a really nice damped feeling wheel as well. So that adds even more to the already very controlled ride feel of the bike. Plus, on the S-Works, you get the range extender battery, which plugs in there at, well, I would say free, but you don't, obviously it's included in the cost, but you get that as standard and the S-Works is the only bike where you get that supplied with the bike so that saves you uh, having to buy that later and gives you know gives this package a bit more versatility and a bit more reason to dig fully deep into your pockets and the other thing to mention unlike some e-bikes you get a full size range with this levo sl you get s1 through to six they've now changed the s series sizing rather than being size specific and they all those bikes get a different carbon layup as well and if you're wondering about the waterproofing the motor is ip67 rated so that's fully waterproof so that's the quick tech talk round done uh apologies if i've missed anything out if there's anything more you want to know about the bike i had a really good long discussion with the specialized engineers both while i've been riding here in snowdonia and on the phone to the us last night so uh, any more details you want to know there's a likelihood i know them i've just forgotten to put them into this video so get busy in the comments below if you'd like any uh sort of more tech details or more comparisons to other bikes i might have ridden but for now massive thanks to specialized uk for inviting me to this pre-launch massive thanks to giro cycling uk for sponsoring the channel alongside pete's products crud xl fenders torque nutrition heb troco and enduro bearing but make sure you get onto youtube i'll put a link at the end and make the most of watching that live ride experience huge thanks as well to my subscribers Patreon supporters who pledge a monthly amount that really, really helps with the sustainability of the channel and lets me spend more time talking to a GoPro about bikes to you. And their names of the investors are scrolling up on the screen now. Those are the guys who give the most, so they deserve the most uh, visibility. And they also get behind the scenes extended and exclusive edits and they get them ad free. So if you're irritated by the ads on YouTube, then you know what to do. Join up on Patreon. But if you can't afford to do that, I mean, it's not much, but if you can't afford to that, I fully understand. So make sure you, but make sure you subscribe, click for notifications and give this a thumbs up because that's all free and it really, really helps the channel grow. And also tell your mates. But for now, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kest TV talking about the specialized S-Works Turbo Levo SL state-of-the-art lightweight MTB with a seriously heavyweight attitude.